Some of you know that in England they have very strict gun regulations. The reason Parliament and surrounding streets and bridges happened to be closed this morning in London, a policeman was stabbed outside Parliament. So in other words, they didn't need to have a gun to attack him, right? Just a large knife would do, or a small knife. I guess now the English will have to institute knife control. Glenn Beck's The Blaze has a story that with gun ownership running at uh, near record levels, I guess at record levels in the United States over the last couple of years, accidental deaths from guns dropped. Dropped dramatically. Yeah, but... I'm sorry, liberal, but the number was 489 for the year. There are 335 million people in the United States, and the numbers are dropping. Yeah, but... And in England, where they have strict gun control, the government is shut down right now because of somebody with a knife. 934, Bill Colley with you on Top Story on News Radio 1310, KLIX and News Radio 1310.com. It's 44. And as I was talking about the weather a little bit earlier this morning, and I always like to mention the weather brought to you by Mountain Home Auto Ranch. My slogan is it's the candy store for grown men, people like me. Uh, but we're going to be dealing with some cold overnights, temperatures down in the mid-30s, which means your furnace will be back in business for the next few days. And if you're starting to have some problems with it, maybe from overuse this winter, you need to call the pros at Ramsey Heating and Electric. They'll come out and they'll get the job done right, and they'll get it done right the first time. Problem-free, cozy winners are found at Ramsey Heating and Electric, 2600 Overland Avenue in Burley. The telephone number six seven eight zero four five nine. That's six seven eight zero four five nine. Ramsey Heating and Electric, where they sell warm winters and cool summers. We have a caller with us. Caller, you're up next. You're on the air on KLIX. Hey, Bill. I was just going to talk to you about the truck driver. You know, I know these new trucks. They won't idle for very long because they'll shut down, you know. But uh, I'll tell you what I would have done is I would have used the cruise control. And, you know, you step on the throttle and set it to a certain RPM, and then you hit your cruise set, and it'll leave that truck idling at a, to where it uh, – and I just turn the heat on <laughs> and say, you guys take your time, but you're, I'm not going to freeze to death in this truck. And another thing is the – if the brakes were bad, I just wonder why that truck left the yard with bad brakes or that guy's using too much brake. Right. I mean, you know, there's just a uh, – but, you know, these companies, you know, I, I don't know what they would do if you overrode the idle on them and kept the heat on. But, I, you know, I really wouldn't care. But it would be harder to fire them than to leave the truck there. And, again, you it's know. not the role of a judge to make a decision on that if he was an at-will employee. That's what I'm going to say. Thanks. Hey, thank you. Thank you for, uh, for the telephone call. Well, this this is the best the liberals have to throw at him. Uh, he's going to sail through confirmation on his way. And uh, not only is it Joe Manchin from West Virginia who's likely going to be voting for him, Manchin should be a Republican. I mean, he's he's a Dino. Uh, he's a Democrat in name only. He, much more so one of us than he is one of them. And he was a very good governor of the state of West Virginia. I have friends from West Virginia, and they think the world of the guy. You'll likely have Bennett from Colorado, Senator Bennett as well, because Gorsuch is a Colorado guy, and Bennett would have a lot of blowback if he voted against him for the court. So there's two Democrats who will be stepping up, which means if all the Republicans vote for him, I heard McConnell say last night, you know, we think we can get to 60 votes. But it was the Democrats who changed the filibuster rules, which means they call it the nuclear option. They're not talking about North Korea here, but they're uh, they're talking about the. It means nuke being a figurative term that we can just we can do a vote of fifty one to forty nine if we needed to to confirm him. But I think a lot of Democrats yesterday, uh, Grant Loeb's when he was in the studio said that the next nominee, because. Gorsuch is replacing a guy who was a lot like him. But the next nominee is likely going to be a conservative replacing someone like Ruth Bader Meinhof or, uh, or Justice Anthony Kennedy. And if that happens, then the Democrats are going to try. They'll, they'll be screaming and whining and, and you know, clawing the walls. And you know what? 
I'd still say, all right, we're going to have a 51-49 vote if need be, or 52-48. To heck with you. Because this is going to determine the direction of this country for years and years and years to come. Supreme Court justices, now not all of them, but they could sit there for 30 or 40 years, and the decisions that will be made will impact whether this country stays on a godly path or gets back on a godly path, maybe a better way to put that, or if we all go join the devil in the Democrat Party. 839 or 939, excuse me. Some days I lose track of time. All right. I'm having so much fun, right? The clock is irrelevant. I have not yet mentioned Waddell and Reed here in Twin Falls, an investment house that's been in business since 1937, one of the oldest firms to offer mutual funds. And in fact, Waddell and Reed offers two mutual fund families investing by a conservative nature. And it's obvious they know what they're doing, having been in business for eight decades. This is a company that's going to take a planning approach, and they'll look at each piece of the puzzle for you. Waddell and Reed helps build proper expectations and will build plans around client needs and goals. Waddell and Reed helps you manage money and takes planning personally. Speaking of radio shows and timing, we got news. We're going to be on the road doing the show live on Friday. I'll tell you where in a few minutes. I was thinking earlier today, I, I'm trying to remember how many remote broadcasts I've done since I joined the radio station. I've done some as a group where we have all four radio stations out at one place. But I think, someone may need to help you on this, but I think I've only individually done, I think two KLX remotes both have been in Jerome. Uh, one last summer at the Last Stand Survival Shop. And then uh, Benito Baeza and I were at the McDonald's in Jerome uh, a couple of summers ago. And uh, we did a did a broadcast one evening there. And it was a, for a charitable cause, which was wonderful. I mean, it, it, we should point out that the Kyle family and all the local McDonald's restaurants are very much involved in giving back to this community. Friday morning, we're doing the entire show from the Jerome McDonald's between 8 and 10 o'clock. And we'll be doing the gun segment there, too, as well. I told Todd Eccles to meet me there. Uh, Todd and I are both people. Todd has dropped 60 pounds, and I've dropped about a little bit more than that in the course of the last uh, several months. So I don't know that we'll be eating a huge breakfast, but I, I, I don't know that Todd's much of a coffee drinker. I am. And McDonald's coffee, look, you got this place based in Seattle that sells you a cup of coffee for $5. You get a little tiny cup. And they tell you that it's good coffee. And McDonald's will sell you a cup for uh, <laughs> for a buck, and it's better. So I will be imbibing while I'm there on Friday morning. But we'll be set up in the restaurant doing the entire show. And uh, welcome you to drop by and take a look at what we do. You won't be seeing me run a soundboard because somebody will be doing that here. I'll just be sitting at the table, and we'll be talking that morning. And we, our goal is to do this throughout the valley. Uh, we're talking about doing a show uh, the week leading up to Memorial Day from the Wilson Theater. Um, I'm really looking forward to that. Uh, I, I, a beautiful place. We'll likely be right there on the stage inside the theater. People will be welcome to come in that day and sit down in the seats and watch the show as it's broadcast live from that location. And then there's going to be several other places we'll be at in between. And I have a dream since I came to Idaho of actually, and this one would be a little bit, I don't know whether anybody listens to us in northern Idaho unless they're listening online. Our signal, as I said the other day, I went up to Sun Valley, and I could hear us in Sun Valley. I've got a, on my, my, my Chevy, I drove the Chevy up there, uh, the Malibu, and I could hear us. It wasn't maybe the strongest signal, but I heard every last bit of the programming that was on the air at the time Sunday afternoon while I was driving around downtown Sun Valley. And my Jeep was pretty good about that, too. I could generally hear us when I was in Sun Valley. But beyond that, going north, it's a little dicier to hear what we do. I still, however, would like to do a show from Wallace, which bills itself as the center of the universe. So I could say... When I'm no longer doing radio shows somewhere down the road, I could say that, yes, I have broadcast from the center of the universe. That likely would require me to drive up there on a, on a, on a Sunday night. It's about eight hours. 
and uh, then do the show in the morning and then immediately turn around and drive back to, to Twin Falls. But it's my, it, it, it's my current radio dream to do the show from there. And, and, and how many other people could say that? I've, I've broadcast from the center of the universe, which who knows? Maybe it is. Depend- <laughs> it's a great promotion. The people who thought that up, the marketing people, uh, had a brilliant idea. Bill Colley with you on Top Story on News Radio 1310, KLIX, and News Radio 1310.com. It's 46 at 946, and I thank you for spending some time with us today. Came across this while I was doing some uh, research last night out of uh, the Weekly Standard, which is uh, William Crystal's publication. He used to be somewhat of a conservative. I guess he's still a conservative. He's not very populist. He's not a big fan of Donald Trump's. But that doesn't dismiss the publication. The Weekly Standard is still a pretty good publication. Church attendance, this is the headline, church attendance gave us Trump. In the current issue of The Atlantic, the writer Mark Hemingway says, Peter Beinart has an essay arguing that the decline in religiosity among American voters is what allowed for the election of Donald Trump and contributes to the bitter state of American politics. So now liberals are bemoaning the lack of people going to church. Well, one is Peter Beinart, writing for The Atlantic. And when I used to subscribe to The Atlantic back in the late 90s and early part of this century, it was a much more middle-of-the-road publication. It has really drifted far, far away to the left. Beinart, the writer says, doesn't shy away from the controversial arguments involved, including the suggestion that some groups like Black Lives Matter, they aren't persuasive. Because unlike previous civil rights movements, it rejects the moral authority of the church. Black Lives Matter activists, he writes, may be justified in spurning an insufficiently militant church, but when you combine their post-Christian perspective with the post-Christian perspective growing inside the GOP, it's easy to imagine American politics becoming more and more vicious. Now, I don't know that the GOP was at all post-Christian. He believes it was, but he's right about Black Lives Matter. The people in Black Lives Matter are primarily, well, they're anarchists, atheists, or they're, you know, black Muslims, a handful. But they're really black nationalists, and they reject religious faith, which is why they don't mind being violent in the streets. It's it's part of their movement. They've gotten away from the old notion that you saw from Ralph, uh, Ralph Abernathy and Martin Luther King, Jr., and they've moved beyond that. They don't have any religious underpinning for their cause other than just throw rocks. The Atlantic's own uh, Tennessee Coates, arguably the preeminent civil rights writer of the age, once wrote an essay where he admitted he had no idea who St. Augustine was, despite being a key allusion in Martin Luther King Jr.'s letter from a Birmingham jail. Uh, and this writer, Mr. Hemingway, at the Weekly Standard, says it should also be noted that the New York Times columnist, Ross Dothet, has been making the same argument for a while. However, he's a conservative Roman Catholic, whereas a liberal like Beinart making this argument is somewhat surprising. And Beinart's piece is an honest assessment of the problem and well worth reading. Now, there were people who voted for Donald Trump who are living in flyover country who truly, and the numbers show it, they don't go to church any longer. And if they can, they sleep in late on Sunday morning. They're not much different than my own folks. My mom and dad pretty much gave up on religious faith when I was a boy. and uh, just Yet, they didn't, I, let me put it this way, religion in the sense of church going, they gave up on weekly church going. They didn't give up on what they believed. My dad was staunchly pro-life. So was my mom. My dad once told me, now, Some people are going to argue this is an archaic view, but remember his generation, Depression-era guy. We were watching a TV news report, and this was 30-some years ago. We were watching a TV news report about AIDS. And he looked at me and he said, that's God punishing people for their bad behavior. Liberals don't like to hear that. Conservatives, in many cases, don't like to hear that. But that's middle America. And my dad, who'd been a Democrat, well, he was what was called a labor Democrat. Like a lot of those people in Michigan and Ohio and Pennsylvania who voted Democrat in the past but voted for Donald Trump this year or this past year. 
They're the same people who voted in 1980 and 1984 for Ronald Reagan, as my dad did. They're sick of what's happened in this country. Yes, they may not go to church every week, but they still strongly believe in the message. And they're, they're, for all of the talk that the culture wars are over and that the right lost in this country and that religious faith lost, I don't know about that. There was a writer the other day at National Journal who said some research has been done in some of these Rust Belt states that turned and voted for Trump and left the Democrat plantation. And it turns out a lot of them, they may even be a little libertarian about who you should be able to sleep with uh, and some of those notions, but it doesn't mean they like the idea. They don't want to be bothered. They don't want to bother you. But when you come to them and say, you're going to bake a cake, I, Johnny and Jimmy are getting married, and we want you to bake a cake for Johnny and Jimmy. And if you say, I'm not comfortable about that, they'll try and put you out of business. That annoys these people to no end. They're willing to let you go out and, and, and have your same-sex wedding, but they do not wish to be forced into participating. And liberal Democrats, well, that's just about all of them, isn't it, any longer? The party has moved so far to the left, haven't figured that out yet. And they will never win back those people who grew up working in coal mines, who grew up knowing some of the old uh, gospel songs, even if they don't go to church every week. Liberal Democrats have lost those people for at least a generation, if not longer, because their children while they may not, as I say, be in church every week, their children are growing up with the same views that mom and dad have. It's 9.52. Bill Colley with you on Top Story on News Radio 1310, KLIX and News Radio 1310.com. And they're just sick to death of being told, you have to believe in this. You have to believe that, you, that, that we need to open the gates and allow all of these illegal immigrants in here to take your job. And if you don't, that's because you're a lazy, stupid white person and you're likely addicted to meth. We liberal whites from the coast know that and we know better than you do. And you have to open the doors and bring in all of these refugees, some of whom may do like they did in London this morning. And you stupid white person, you poor white trash, you just don't understand it. We should allow grown men to go into the little girl's toilet. This is what you get as a result of all of that is a revolt from these people, and their vote counts just as much as the limousine liberals' votes count. And they spoke loudly last year. Telephone number for our program today, 736-0300. That's 736-0300. You can also reach me by email at bill.colley at townsquaremedia.com. And we have a caller with us. You're up next. You're on the air on KLIX. Yeah, quickly, Bill. I know I'm calling back, but uh, this morning on MSNBC, the uh, host just kept trying to push the fact that nobody could prove that it was a terrorist attack in London. And and he's so worried about the narrative. And you say, these people are off their nut. And, and this is the thing that's so terrible about this, you know, that they're more worried about that than what happened to the victims in London. But this will definitely cement Brexit. I'll hang up. Thanks. It sure will. And, you know, if they could have a redo on the election last week in Holland, it would probably put uh, put the nationalist candidate over the top. Although, I was reading all of the results from that. His name is Gert Wilders. I was reading all of the, the, the liberal cheerleading after that election because he didn't win. Oh, it was a slap down, a slap of the face to nationalists and right-wingers and racist bigots all across Europe. Except that his party, there, there are, he did, he did finish second, that's true. Turned out there were 23 parties in the parliament who were vying for votes. 23. Which meant that uh, 21 of them finished behind him. Prior to last week's vote in Holland, his party had 13% of all of the seats. And as I said, these are divvied up between almost two dozen parties. Following last week's vote, his party now has 21% of the seats. So they, and the other party only has a few more when it comes to percentage, the, the party that won. So his party gained 8%. 
that tells me that it's getting closer and closer and closer t- to the point where his party is going to end up winning the majority of seats, or at least the plurality of seats, and we'll be able to start calling the shots in that country. And, and, and so liberal media was dancing around last week. Ah, ha, ha, he lost. You know, we here on the coast of the United States, we're a lot like the Dutch. We like legalized prostitution and legalized drugs. In fact, we here on the coast of America, while we make fun of all of the flyover people here as being heroin addicts, we'd love to go to Holland and shoot up heroin in the streets legally with all of our fellow liberals and fellow travelers in that country. Except that didn't happen. He gained 8% eight, eight of the seats he, over where he had been before. And we've still got an election coming up in France. All of these things, these attacks are going to determine how people vote. And it doesn't matter what the elites tell you. You want to be safe when you walk down the street. You want your daughter to be safe when she goes in to use the bathroom at school. And you want her not to be raped by two illegal immigrants. You don't want your brother, who might be a policeman, stabbed outside the parliament building or here on the local level either. And it doesn't matter what Mika Brzezinski or Joe Scarborough or some skanky Hollywood entertainer tells you. You're going to make up your own mind for your own best interests. Bill Colley with you today, having to wrap things up. Rush Limbaugh will be along following the news at 10 o'clock from the Fox Radio Network. Just after 1 o'clock news today, Sean Hannity's program. Glenn Beck between 4 and 7. And, of course, Dave Ramsey from 7 until 10 o'clock tonight. Here on News Radio 1310, KLIX and News Radio 1310.com. He couldn't make it today because of a last minute committee call, and, and we do hope that he can join us tomorrow. Uh, they're trying to trying to do that. Tomorrow's the big vote in the House of Representatives in Washington on Ryan Care, or Trump Care, as liberals are calling it. Raul Labrador, who's the congressman, of course, from uh, one half of Idaho, scheduled to join us. They're going to try to reschedule for tomorrow morning in the first half hour of the show. And he'll have some thoughts. He is in that Freedom Caucus, which says, ain't no way they're going to vote for this uh, warmed-over Obamacare. So I am looking forward to that potentially tomorrow morning here on News Radio 1310, KLIX and News Radio 1310.com. Bill Colley saying, have a great day, and God willing, if the Greek don't rise, I'll be back tomorrow.